I thought it would be nice to give you a little behind the scenes look on a studio day that I have. I usually take like one or two days per week to spend out in the studio. Usually have one day that's like a full day where I do like in between two to six hours of work. And then the other day or two throughout the week, I'll just do like a one to three hour check in on my projects or just touch ups. But I primarily just do one major day working on ceramics a week just because I'm working five days a week and it's kind of hard to like figure out a full day when you're kind of working weird hours. So I need to make some drainage holes and some plant pots. I need to glaze some plant pots as well and glaze possibly this bookshelf but that might be in a separate video. I need to also build some jewelry holders. So previously I've made things like this that you're supposed to, I mean you could use it for whatever you wanted but my intention was that you could put your like rings or necklaces on and I want to make some of these maybe like either the exact same shapes or at least inspired by this. And then lastly, I need to load a kiln and fire it. So I have a lot to actually get done today. I'll put timestamps so you can jump around if you don't want to watch certain spots. Other than that, I hope you're having a great rest of your day and hopefully you'll enjoy this video. Let's get to work. They're just like still kind of sinking in when I touch the bottom. So I'm gonna let them sit uncovered for a bit. It's only been like 40 degrees in the shed lately, so I'm just assuming it's been so cold that the clay hasn't been able, been able to dry at all. Um, but I'm gonna go work on something else while I let these dry and we'll keep going. So in ceramics, my kryptonite, my thing I hate the most, and I'm learning to love it the more I do this, but I just really do not like glazing. I love building, I love creating things, and when I get to the point where it's been fired once, I'm like, eh, I'm done. I'm like, I released all the energy I needed and I can move on to something else, and that's such a bad thing to do, so. I'm gonna now glaze some plant pots that I've been postponing glazing for a really long time and as you can tell I constructed them really poorly like they're cracked on the bottom but I have some plants that need repotting inside and in my head I'm just seeing this as more drainage. Um, the roots will not get too wet and there's now extra areas for the water to just go through so Trying to look at the positives here. Right, right, yeah. I just made this glaze for the first time myself. It's a low fire clear glaze. So I have no idea if this is gonna turn out, but that's why I'm bringing you along for the process.
I definitely try my best to do as even of a coat as I can, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I try that hard in the end just because I feel like it'll all end up melting in the kiln. So as long as you get a good even coverage on most of it, you're fine. If you decide to not glaze the inside of a plant pot, just know that it's going to still be a bit porous, so a lot of the water is still going to be sucked into the clay body. So you're just going to have to plant. <laughs> Wait, you're just going to have to water the plant a bit more often than a regular plant pot, like a plastic pot or something. The inside I definitely am less neat about. I just like a general coverage. Just usually one coat is enough on the inside for me. When I built these bookshelves, did I turn the camera on? Yeah. When I booked these, <laughs> when I made these bookshelves, I made them the exact dimension of my kiln. I don't have a very big kiln, um, so this is the maximum size that I can make. So I'm gonna just test to make sure before I bring this down to the kiln that this is still gonna fit. Perfect. It's literally like the exact size. Um, I think I'm gonna have to fire them though two separate times, unfortunately. 
I wish I could stack them on top of each other, but I am worried that that weight will make them crack in the kiln though. So I think we're just gonna fire this one today and I have a couple other small projects I can put in there too so it's not super wasteful. And we're gonna go from there. So I also have something called an extruder, uh, which means I can make coils really fast. I don't have to hand roll them myself. So I just have two little pieces like this. Those on, and then I put my clay in here and then I can just pump out the coils super quick. Okay, now we get to move on to something a bit more fun and we get to build. Like I said earlier, I don't love glazing. It's not like my least favorite thing to do, um, but it's nice to do that first and then that way you have like the fun thing second to do. Otherwise I tend to find that if I do the thing I'm not excited for last, either takes me so long to do or I don't even do it because by the time I'm like done building, I'm just like, nah, I'm ready to go inside. So, that was a long tangent, but the whole point is now we get to move on to the fun part. I want to kind of make something similar to these two things. It doesn't really have to be exact. I haven't prepped or planned or sketched anything, so... I think I'm going to do something like this. I think sometimes this top part is a bit restricting, so maybe I'll do one that just has this nice little ledge, but maybe it won't have the dividers. Yeah, let's start with that. Doesn't matter what you start with. We'll just start with this longest coil here. I kind of just make my shape. And then I'll just pinch off what I don't need. And then merge the clay together. Maybe we'll do a really long one like that. Yeah.
hate when that happens, when you're like so close to finishing that coil. I always make sure to try to start my coils in different spots. It's so like the first one I started here, second one here, third one here. That way if you have any cracking, it's not putting additional stress on like the same spot over and over and over. I'm gonna stop here just because they're still pretty easily bendable and I want them to kind of harden up so I can focus a bit more on surface texture tomorrow. But I think this is a good spot to stop. So this is my kiln. I don't want to talk about it right now, honestly. It's a manual kiln. There's a lot more to it, but it's really simple, honestly. You don't have to do much with it. Uh, but that's for another video that will go into more detail with this. For now, I'm just going to load up one of the bookshelves, a couple other small pieces I have, get this kiln started, and then I think I'm going to be done for today. I just finished working on things for the day and I would say it was a fairly productive day. I probably did like the same average amount that I normally do on a studio day. I find it hard to find a bit of that motivation during this winter time. This year has just been pretty difficult and I feel like I'm trying not to push myself too much but also trying to be realistic that I need to keep pushing my boundaries and um, kind of keep growing because I do feel pretty stagnant in this last six months. I 
I'm trying not to blame my lack of artistic work on like certain things that have happened in my life, but also trying to give myself some grace and not kind of like get too down on myself that I'm not creating more things than I'd like to. Winter's kind of tough for a lot of people I know too, so I just feel like I needed to be vocal and open with people and saying it's not always gonna be like getting a hundred things done in a week or two weeks. Just get whatever you can done and be happy with what you're creating and try to stay present in what you're doing as well. Sorry for that little tangent, but I just feel like I need to be realistic with everyone. Hope you have a good rest of your day and see ya.